Welcome back to Pinoy Crossover. Again, our guest is Franz. Familiar face was a very good shooter on our Can You Score game, which is now retired into the rafters. Thank you for coming again, Franz. Thank you. Oh man, what is up in the basketball world with you? I know what, I'm not. A, I don't play ball often. I know you and Mark play ball every Sunday. Tell me about. I know the ball scene with Mark. I don't know what's up with that. You know, um, Mark's a pretty good player. You know, he could uh, drive, and <laughs> he could shoot. Yeah. You know, he could uh, pass, so he, he could do it all. So he's kind of like a James Harden type of player. <laughs> oh, he's stroking your that biceps, lefty. man. That lefty. Stroking those biceps. Lefty. Mark, Mark, what would you like yeah. to say about Franz's game? And say something nice. He kind of patted <laughs> your, your arms over here. We have, we have fun when we play our Sunday balls. Um, uh, shout out when we were playing, I think, two weeks ago. I was uh, calling in the Filipino Mike Miller. <laughs> so jokes. And then Craig, I don't know, what did call, Craig call, oh, uh, our Michael boy Beasley. Craig? He, <laughs> Mike, he oh. called you Michael Beasley. <laughs> this guy was so cheese. He's like, the heck did they call, they get that name from? Yeah. He was just like, you know, it's fun. We had like, you know, four or five of us. Uh, four on fours, we play eight. Uh, sometimes we have 12 of us there, so we have runs after runs. Mm -hmm. We go out uh, for like three or four hours there, just like wow. straight up. On a Sunday, so yeah. it's like, you know, half court, so uh, you don't have to be conditioned. You don't have to like leak like all the Titos yeah, at Hoop Dome. Yeah. And do you, you play at another drop in too during the week? Uh, during the week, yeah, um, Thursdays, um, there's a basketball court in um, Kennedy and uh, Lawrence. So okay. it's pretty much a good pickup um, you know, uh, for everybody. It's free. Oh, it's free? Yeah. Oh, so. If the so, game is on. Uh, gonna, Thursday there's gonna night. There's going to be an influx of people Thursday night, going yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. Who would you say has the better players? <laughs> Mikey Mike's run or your run? The oh, Sunday uh, or Thursday? Um, I'd say uh, pretty much the same. Uh, oh, pretty much the same. Thursday is just more competitive. It's just because uh, it's full court. And um, some guys that play in um, like Filipino leagues play there too. Oh. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's more competitive. Mm. Mm. Talking about competition, talking about NBA, the, you know, the home of competition of all the great players, what has been impressive to you so far? What team are you really excited about in this 2017-18 season? Well, um, before the season started, I was originally um, you know, excited for OKC. Mm. Uh, they kind of started slow. Uh, however, uh, there are a couple of surprising teams this season, like, uh, let's say, Philadelphia uh, 76ers and um, New York Knicks. Mm. New York Knicks especially. Uh, no one really, you know, um, thought that they would be in this position right now. Um, Sixers, um, I kind of, you know, had a clue that they would click <laughs> since mm -hmm. um, Simmons would be back and then uh, Embiid would, you know, play well. Um, other than that, uh, the other sleepers, you know, let's say Lakers, um, I'm surprised they're actually winning games. Mm. You know, at, at one point they're, they're at the 18th. They're not winning enough. <laughs> they're not winning enough, but really, yeah. at some point, um, yeah, they're at the 8th seed. Um, mm. But once the, um, the new, like, uh, built teams are, like, start clicking, like, let's say, uh, Minnesota and OKC with the new players, mm -hmm. they're going to be a uh, force to, reckon, be, mm. to be reckoned with. It's funny because last episode, remember that was the question? He sided with Norm's answer, the same thing. Oh, he basically really? attacked you. Oh, yeah? He said that Philadelphia, they know, they, they, what was the question last? Who was the most surprising team, right? I said In, Philly. He said Philly, he said New York. He said Knicks. Yeah, so basically he's on Norm's, oh, Norm's yeah? side. And the oh, funny thing is you actually with played Norm, with right? Norm too, right? We'll see. Yeah, well, uh, like I said, um, I believe both teams are very surprising, mm. you know, especially Philly right now. They're, they're winning a lot of games. Is there, mm. any, uh, is there any rising star right now in the NBA that you feel like reminds you of players back in the end? Because okay, so you're big in old school basketball. Mm. Is there any certain players right now, rising star, like maybe Giannis, Porzingis? Is there any players right now that reminds you of certain player back in the day that, you know, it's just to educate some kids, you know, we have to educate, educate the young kids, kids that are watching mm -hmm. our show. Um, I'd say, uh, you know, like a triple-double machine, that would be, um, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Simmons. So mm -hmm. he's like, it, it's kind of weird to like, uh, compare it to like old school players, but mostly like, uh, he's like a LeBron, Jason Kidd kind of, you know, type of player. Mm -hmm. um, uh, another explosive player right now is um, a guy that's playing for Dallas. Uh, I forgot what's his name. Oh, Dennis Smith. Smith? He's like a, he's like a young Westbrook. 
Young West. Yeah, Mo? as long yeah. as he doesn't get injured, um, yeah. and Dallas puts the pieces around him. Yeah. Uh, once Nowitzki retires, then uh, maybe Dallas would be back in contention. Mm. Mm. What is he's that your pick for rookie of the year still? My rookie of the year would be obviously um, Simmons. Simmons. Yeah, even though he's, uh, you know, he didn't start last year. He was supposed yeah. to be there. Yeah. Uh, he's still considered the rookie because um, he didn't play at all last exactly. year. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What team do you follow religiously? Like, what's your team that you really follow? In oh, obviously, my main team, you know, as always, was Lakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're happy right now with uh, with Lonzo? What are you, what's your, what are your thoughts on Lonzo um, and Kuzma? Like, you know. Kuzma, I really like a lot. I like his yeah. game. Like, you know, if uh, if anything, if I would be a like a professional player, uh, I'd play like closely like to like Kuzma or you know like that's the type of um, you know playmaker I like to be like. Mm -hmm. um, Lonzo, a lot of people are like uh, concerned about his um, his stats and you know how he's doing, especially like you know people like uh, Stephen A. Smith. Um, they they think he's a bust. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say give the the guy some time. Maybe he'll flourish to you know uh, a special uh, you know player. Um, people mostly compare him to like Jason Kidd, which I really see. Mm -hmm. And you compare their stats when um, Jason Kidd and Lonzo Ball were rookies. Mm -hmm. They're very similar. And uh, Lonzo Ball has already you know um, had a, a couple of triple doubles in his rookie year, which is you know uh, uncalled for. Um, Simmons, I guess you could say the same thing. But um, Lonzo's, Lonzo's, you know, much more younger. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the Lakers, Marky Mark? They're, they're fun to watch. Um, yeah. I mean, there's not, I don't think there should be a concern with Lonzo. He's young, like, uh, in a sense, you're giving, you're giving, this guy's getting three or four years head start compared to what most players are like in terms of what his game should be because he's playing the point guard position. Uh, I know his shot's still broken. Uh, I think they have to do something with it. I don't think they have to fully... It's either they have to do something to change it now or give him three or four years to get used to the NBA speed mm -hmm. and his shot will just adjust automatically as soon, and he will just adjust automatically to the speed and the length of the NBA. Mm -hmm. So if he keeps his shot, I think he's gonna probably going to struggle with shooting percentage and field goal, uh, three-point shooting percentage and free throw percentage maybe for a year or two, maybe the next three years until he gets used to the speed of the NBA because if you watch him play, he plays at his own pace. Like he's not the kind of guy that you know. If you watch Rondo uh, uh, play, the kind of players that he's compared to, like Jason Kidd or Rondo, they change the pace. Like they control the pace, whereas Lonzo has his own pace that he he's because he's very chill. He's very um, I don't know. He's very hypnotic in terms laid of back. he just laid back. Yeah. So his pace never really changes in terms of you know. I understand that he's a really good passer. He has really good vision in terms of how he plays. But the change of pace is very important in the NBA, and he seems to always play at a certain pace, whereas great NBA point guards control the pace, and they can either run slow or fast. Like, they can control the pace, whereas Lonzo plays with just There's his own pace. speed. Yeah. Just one gear. Yeah. What do you think about Brandon Ingram and Clarkson? Brandon Ingram, um, people thought he was um, a bust to uh, beginning in the season. Too many busts in the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. um, Julius Randle, well, might as well call him well, Lakers too. are always, you know, seen as a high regard. So uh, mm -hmm. the the hype and the, um, you know, the way people see the team, the players, you know, they really put the pressure on those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Ingram, uh, I think he'll be fine. Like he's scoring um, a lot now. He's um, he's supposed to be the leader of the team now. Supposed um, to be. Yeah. He's you know he's getting rebounds. He's getting more points. Um, and yeah, you know, he has a good poise. So um, down the line, I'm pretty sure those young guys will, you know, start to um, get better and develop. And once those guys uh, start getting better, they'll they'll be making the playoffs. You know, get more experience. And I, uh, I'm pretty sure vets would be surrounded with those guys. And then um, hopefully one day they'll be a championship caliber team again. Ooh, that's a big hope. So hopefully. will they will they make a playoffs this year? Um, I remember last time I was here, I said uh, they're a sleeper. Um, they're still I sleeping? hope so. Um, <laughs> Are they sleeping right now? <laughs> when are you going to wake up? They're a sleeper right. team. If, um, if, they, if they, uh, they're they consistent, mm. right now I don't really see them making the playoffs. Mm. Um, you know, you have Pelicans, you have, uh, what do you call that, uh, OKC, they're they're kind of below the, uh, the standings. Mm. And there's so many teams fighting for, um, you know, at the west side. 
Uh, if they're in the east side, then they would have a much better chance like Philly is doing right now. Mm -hmm. Even uh, New York, um, Porzingis said they're a playoff team. Mm -hmm. um, they have a slight chance of making it. But uh, we'll see down the season um, what the standings are. And nearby April, we'll find out uh, hopefully uh, who's going to make it.